Okay, everybody, it's time for another A to Z video. We're going to do one on our tricolored hognose snakes. Uh, we've got several adults here, and we actually had a really good year on, on producing quite a few um, different clutches of these things. So cool snakes. They're just kind of now getting into uh, a little bit of the mainstream. I really think that they're going to be promising for the future. There's just a, kind of a lot of natural uh, variation in uh, pattern and color phases or even morphs. Um, and I think we're really just seeing the beginning. We've actually hatched out a few this year here that are really special. I'm going to show them off a little bit later in the video, but uh, I think that they could be something, something totally different than anything um, that's been seen so far, I hope. Very cool snakes, um, pretty easy to take care of. The requirements are basic. I'll just go over those, how I keep the adults, how I keep the babies. Um, the babies are born super small. So uh, it's a little bit of a turnoff for some people, I think, when they're looking to get a pit snake. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't want something that's that small because it's just, how am I going to take care of that thing? But they grow very quickly and the babies are capable of, of eating. Most of them will eat pinky mice right away, right off the bat. But uh, they're cool. This is full size. This is a full size female right here. And males seem to get a little bit smaller. But uh, yeah, this girl bred this year and I don't see her getting much bigger than this. This is a real nice one. From what I've seen, these things grow quickly. I bought two pairs um, a couple years ago, and they were to breeding size within like 15 months, which is very rapid growth for, for a snake. Most of my king snakes and milk snakes and, and uh, bows and stuff, at least three years, sometimes four to five years before they get to breeding size. But these things grow really quickly, and um, they have a relatively short lifespan too from what I've heard. I've only had the original two pair that I purchased years ago, a couple years ago. Um, and obviously they're still doing great, but I've heard like anything from six to eight years being the max lifespan for, for most tricolored hogs. We'll get right into it. I'm going to talk about how I keep uh, the adults here. This is a full grown female, like I said, so I keep her in a 28 quart tub. I'll show you. This is where she's living. You could almost get away with something smaller than this, but she does pretty well in it just very simple i have a low water dish in there they don't really seem to want to get up but they do drink a lot of water so i want to keep this thing obviously clean all the time i got a moist hide in here uh, another couple hides and i put some moss and stuff in here as well and i'll spray this down every day or two um, they are a semi-fossorial species so like i would say 75 percent of the time i find them buried underneath the substrate and then other times they'll come in and they're just like sitting out laying out and you open up the cage and they definitely get excited about eating so they want to be right up in you know your face basically what's happening here am i going to get fed so um pretty outgoing little snakes i haven't had any um any real issues with them they're very easy to keep i almost keep them just above room temperature this snake room up here where i keep most of my animals stays between probably 75 and 82 all the time and uh i do have some belly heat on this particular rack in the back set at 80 degrees I don't know if I really need it I've kept the babies I have some babies that I keep on the same heat set at 80 degrees the front of the cage is gonna be a little cooler and then I have some that I've kept at just completely room temperature just to see if there was a difference and both seem to be doing just fine I think getting them too hot would uh would probably be more of an issue than keeping them on the cooler side I think anything between 70 and 80 is probably fine for these um, you know, maybe that 75 to 78 is probably really where you really want to be. They can get a little bit warmer. Doesn't seem to be a problem. Get a little bit cooler. Doesn't seem to be a problem either. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty hardy. Uh, so let's get into some of our some of our babies here. I'll show you how I um, keep those. And also we got some eggs hatching right now. So we're going to have a look at those eggs that are hatching. Also, guys, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you're watching this video doesn't cost you anything makes me feel like I'm doing something positive so take a second and uh, subscribe if you can anyway let's look at some of our babies here so I keep the babies in pretty small uh, deli cups follow my information written on them when they hatched what they're eating all that kind of stuff and so this is how I keep them here Keep them in these smallish deli cups, pretty thick substrate in there. And what I did was I just stapled these little 
many, many water dishes. I stapled an empty one in here, and then this one sits down in there kind of at an angle, so it's not very high off the ground in there, and they can find the water. Like I said, I, they drink a lot. They drink, it seems like, all the time. And I'm drinking, so this little baby right here is just about two weeks old. Come here, little guy. We'll pull out a few that are slightly bigger as well. So yeah, I noticed right off the bat a lot of variability within the regularity of the triads. So you'll get some babies that really look just like your standard um, standard tricolored snake with very easy, even bands. And then some will come out like this where this one's got just kind of a blotchy, uh, looks like it didn't quite finish downloading almost. Really cool looking pattern. And I'm hoping to, you know, hold out, hold um, the best of the best here and hope that they can, um, you know, we can kind of exaggerate all of these irregularities. I also want some that are look really clean and great. And then it's kind of cool to have some that are really aberrant also. But anyway, this is how I keep all the babies until they get up to... Um, you know, until they've had about 10 meals. Once they've had about 10 meals, I'll move them up to something else. And I'll show you a couple that I've um, held back. I'm also gonna show you a couple of these ones that I think are pretty special. And it looks like one just hatched out of this new clutch also that I'm gonna show you. So hold on one second, put this one back. So once they get a little bit bigger, put them into something a little bit bigger. Keep them about the same way I put it, still have a big water dish in there. Of course, it sort of helps with the humidity front. Just want to get a good look at you here. Now this one here is a very brightly patterned one. And he's also got very consistent triads. You can see uh, they're just really consistent. Nothing too uh, barren about it, but I kind of like that. I like, I like the extremes of both. I like very cleanly patterned ones and then ones that are super barren as well. So this one's definitely clean and bright. So put this guy back. Probably gonna burrow right down. And this one is really special here. This was the first one that hatched out with this sort of, uh, I don't even know, you could almost call it like a pastel-ish. Seems like that'd be a good name for it, but this one is very, very bright. And you'll notice that in almost all the tricolored hognose, there's a little bit of black tipping in the orange or red bands, but this one here has none of that going on. It's just bright orange, but it's almost like a hypo, but the black is still jet black. Look at that thing. The color just pops. I'm not sure how it will come through on the video. So it's got some, um, the triads start out real clean and then they kind of get all chopped up and mixed up right here. It looks cool though. And the orange is just really orange. There's no black tipping on any of those scales in there. We'll see what it looks like when it gets older. And then I've got a couple other ones that hatched out as well that looks similar to this. And then I've got another one that just hatched out today that we're gonna take out and have a look at that one too. Anyway, so that one's pretty special. I was really stoked and surprised to find that one when it hatched out. I mean, it just stood out so much from the rest of its clutch mates. I was like, what the heck is this? This is awesome. And then I ended up getting two more um, a couple months later because these things do lay multiple clutches in a year. I got several clutches from each of my females this year. Um, all of these pastel-y looking ones all came from the same pair um, of just normal looking adults. So still not really sure exactly what's going on there, but it's pretty awesome. Anyway, let's take a look at this clutch that just hatched out it was a nine egg clutch. Some of them already hatched out and then there were like four or five eggs left. It looks like they've all come out now. And you're gonna freak when you see this one, it's incredible. Look at that right there. I haven't even taken the lid off this yet. Some of them hatched out yesterday and then I left it overnight. This one popped out, holy smokes. Look at that thing. I'll probably have to put in a still picture. So I'm not sure how good the footage on the GoPro is gonna be on this thing, but wow. It's got like a white face. The bands are pretty clean, but um, it's definitely very orange 
and it's got like a little bit of white on each side of um, the orange, which usually would just go right orange to black. Anyway, that is freaking cool. All right, so just real quickly on the feeding part of things, um, I start all these babies off on frozen thawed pinkies and I don't let them go until they've had at least four or five, you know, something like that on just unscented frozen thawed pinkies. About half of them will start out with um, totally unscented, just frozen thawed day old pinks, the smallest ones you can find typically. Um, most of them will start off on that, like at least half, sometimes more if I have 10 eggs in a clutch and they all hatch half of them will probably start off feeding right away on that some you have to get a little bit more tricky with but um for the most part they're pretty good eaters right off the bat and they can really eat something that is so much bigger than you think they'd be capable of uh pretty amazing like i said they grow pretty fast too but this is how i this is how i feed them here um just take a small piece of this is like a note card that i've cut up i used to use paper towels and then one of them ended up actually eating the freaking paper towel and the pinky together that was not good so ever since then i've been using something a little bit sturdier um, and i just set the frozen thawed uh, food item right there on top of uh, the piece of paper and they come around and they find it themselves and they eat it themselves so any of that um, i sell all come with feeding records and um, the buyer would know exactly what it ate how it ate um, when it ate all that kind of stuff so if it's a problem eater, if it's something that's requiring scenting or whatever, I usually don't sell them. I like to um, make sure that they're really well established that way. People don't have problems with them when they get sent off to someone else. You know, they're they're ready to go, they're established, they're eating, no problems. And that's one of my main um, reasons for making this video is to show you guys how I keep them that way. If you get one in the future, um, you know exactly how they're set up here, which has worked. You can replicate that setup where you're at and then build onto that but get that snake established with you so anyway that's what's up with feeding so let's uh look at a few more of these crazy looking babies okay this video is getting a little long i get it but there's one more of these kind of new uh more potentially uh babies that i want to show you guys pretty sweet check it out anyway this one's really special i, I have not seen any others produced like this so if anybody has i would love to hear about it so this one is definitely carrying the same type of genetics as those other ones this one is just really showing it in a little bit of a different way these real thick black bars of the white is just kind of vanished really cool i'll probably have to put a couple still photos in just to uh catch it a little better. I'm not sure how good the GoPro video will. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Feel free to uh, reach out with any questions that you may have. I'll do my very best to answer them. I'm sure there's plenty of things I left out. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can find us on Instagram as well at Golden Coast Exotics, Facebook, Golden Coast Exotics, all that stuff. Also, remember, guys, if you are looking for a snake for a pet or any reptile for that matter, buy from the breeder as best as possible if it if whenever practical which it almost always is especially in the you know today's day and age you can find a breeder of just about anything with all the avenues of social media and uh, the internet and all that stuff stay out of PetSmart and uh, you know support your local reptile breeder all right have a good night everybody thanks for watching